in the public hearing for the 2022 budget. The public hearing for the 2022 budget is open. Are there any speakers wishing to address the council on the 2022 budget? Seeing none, I will close the hearing for the 2022 budget. Council, are there questions about the 2022 budget? Okay, I'll make a motion then to adopt the 2022 budget as published. Second. There is a motion and a second to adopt the 2022 budget as published. All those in favor, please show a voting sign. Motion passes. I have three copies of everyone I'll just sign wherever. Uh, MOPAC, item B. MOPAC agreement. <clears throat> okay, uh, Mayor and Council, enclosed in your packet is an uh, agreement I had City Attorney look over. It's uh, with Wildlife and Parks to fund the grant for the extension of the MOPAC trail. Uh, that is the biggest portion of the funding for the trail extension, and the other portions coming from the Sunflower grant that we already received. Uh, there should be little to no expense from the city as far as funding goes. We'll have some in-kind labor, but uh, asking for approval of the necessary documents with wildlife and parks. And, and this would basically finish out that trail east-west, which would now go the entire uh, go east, pretty much the entire east-west distance. Now. Right, and it generally end up somewhere behind Super 8 or uh, Sterling 6 Cinema. Have we already secured all the land ways on that? I know yes. there's one time there's some questions. No, we, we, we got the property on First Street with the condemnation of that house uh, through trade on that, and uh, the rest is already public road right away, all the way to Kentucky. The school piece is actually on school property, and then the other piece, uh, the last, what I call the last third, will probably be on the road street right away, depending on you know how that works when we start putting it in. But we should have, uh, the only easement we may need to give is from Mr. Bagby of the He's, we were to talk to him. Corey, where does it currently stop at the school? Is it being right there by the uh, uh, tennis courts? Correct. It stops on the west side of the tennis courts, Steve. And uh, we won't run that through the school property. Uh, there's some good four or five foot sidewalk all the way around that facility. We'll go over on, I guess if you can envision the old backstops over there. We'll tie into that existing sidewalk across the street there. And then there's a for lack of better terms, there's an alley easement or an old railroad piece that the city owns that gets you over to that other property from the curries that we got, uh, gosh, in the last year, early this year, I can't remember which. I will say on my run, walk, jogs, whatever slow movement they are now in this heat, uh, the Mopac is one of the more traveled trails. I always see somebody on it, Mark, I know that you walk. Yeah, and we're, we're going to have to do something where the Mopac ends and gets up to that sidewalk. We're going to have to kind of curve that off because bicyclists cut across it anyway. Oh. And, and the other two corners are already wide enough to where they can make the corners. And we'll be having, I've already had one public meeting with landowners down through there um, with the intent to have another one as the project starts to get kicked off. Um, a lot of this will be in kind. We'll buy the screens. It's all going to be screens. Uh, we'll, we'll bid it out to the concrete work of the handicap ramps at each street. Uh, we'll probably paint all the lines for the crossings and put all the pedestrian ahead uh, crossing signs on the streets as well, internally. When do you envision this to start? Uh, I mean, as soon as we sign the grant agreements, we can we can start on it any time uh, after after we get signed documents back from wildlife parks. So this, uh, this was uh, only labor intensive for us. Correct. Yeah, there should be no. Uh, the only thing that paid for Ron essentially for this project uh, up front was the piece of that condemnation or the house, the lot, and then uh, we did survey work probably a year ago or a little better to get those pins set. Uh, it would be very little. Pain. Was yeah. the school planning on this uh, when they did their... their uh, <laughs> and that, yeah, I think so. Uh, it was. It also doubles as their fire lane for the fire guys to get in and out of there on the north side of that property. I, it was in the original plans, and then they, I think they started talking about scaling it back a little, and then it got, you know, when we told them the park funding was really for outside that, because the plan was to see it all across the property. It, it is included in the last I knew with the school property. Can I get a motion here? I make a motion that we approve and offer our staff to execute the necessary documents with the Kansas Department of Wildlife and Parks for the MOPAC Recreational Trail Project. Second. 
Motion has been made and seconded to uh, agree to the Kansas <clears throat> Wildlife or Department of Wildlife and Parks Mopac Trail Extension uh, funding. All those in favor, please show a voting sign. Opposed. Motion passes. Roxanne, is this just council signature? Do you need mine on it too? No, yours also. Um, item C, Thrive Labor Study. Good evening, Council. So I'm here this evening to ask uh, City Council to assist in the funding of a labor study for Allen County. And I'm asking for a couple of reasons. One, Allen County has long needed an up-to-date labor study. One that's detailed and one that uh, focuses on the quality and quantity of the uh, local workforce. And two, since Iola is the largest community in Allen County, in my mind it uh, makes sense for Iola to have a part in that funding. Uh, we have the uh, newly released census data that can be useful. I would consider this a far more uh, targeted approach at ground level, a focus on what our labor pool looks like compared to say a 35,000 foot view with the census. The census data can be useful, but this will be, uh, uh, in my mind, far more useful. Does the council have any questions on that? I know I uh, shared some of the benefits in your packets. I could not find a record of one having been done, so uh, not to say that it hasn't, but if there had been, it's not been recently. Matt, if the council approves this, what funding source? Probably our economic development industrial fund. Yeah. yeah. Okay. How much are you asking for from us? Uh, Fifteen hundred dollars. <throat> uh, what I will do if whatever council decides, I'll. Uh, stand before uh, Allen County Commission tomorrow and, and uh, ask them to fund the rest outside of what Evergy has uh, agreed to fund, and that's at $8,000, so. Have you approached Humboldt about, or the other entities about funding? I approached Humboldt. Uh, they declined just because they have a small economic development budget, and they're going to focus that on housing at the time, so uh, they are not going to fund. So what, uh, how does this relate to what is provided through the state in their, in the data that they collect on a regular basis? There's going to be some overlap in data that's collected by the state. Uh, again, this is going to be a far more uh, ground level targeted approach. The, uh, any one of these entities will conduct interviews with some of our largest employers and uh, uh, gather that data that I don't believe the state has. Uh, as it relates to a couple of the items that I highlighted on that um, uh, benefit. For example, uh, job satisfaction among uh, employee survey respondents. You're gonna see some of the uh, uh, population, uh, labor force size, some of those numbers, uh, working status, but uh, desired salary, salary hourly rate, wage is uh, uh, also some data that can be useful. So you, you uh, state in here that the cost is estimated at 20000 depending on the firm selected. Has there been a, an estimate provided by one of the firms so that gives you an idea of that 20000 or will, um, will the end cost be, could be more, it could be less? No, it will be, uh, it will be what's stated. It, Carl, that, I just averaged that. Your second page has got the breakdown of the three bidders and the three yeah. estimates that, that John provided. Okay. Now there are certain add-ons that we <clears throat> could pursue, but uh, those are the uh, those are the hard costs. Is it possible that this that this day and age is going to hurt us, considering that pretty well everybody that has a job mm -hmm. right now that wants one has one? that don't really want to work are not looking to get a job. So when we look at things and they say, well, we've got, you know, 10,000 people in Allen County that aren't working, is that really going to appeal to places that might come here? It will be of interest to uh, uh, businesses that are looking to expand or relocate. Um, this just really pays, paints a, a clear picture of what that labor force looks like if you've got people that are looking to change jobs. And I completely understand that. I'm yeah. guessing that we want to paint that picture right now. 
I understand. You know, no, I, I, I would agree with you because right now there are lots of jobs available and lots of people who don't want to work. I can mean, get 15 jobs today. So, so I wonder if the, the timing time is not this? good for it. I don't know. I might add that the benefit of this too is it benefits our local businesses. So if they are looking to expand, add to a, a, their current workforce, this gives them an idea of what's available. I see some of the value in this could be with the CTE, with the CTE center, um, our, our tech center that's just opened as well, of what needs are needed in the community for the future kind of training. Um, you know, and get hard data for them to, you know, that's a, that's a big joint partnership with 257, uh, Neosho, Allen, Fort Scott, and I think that might be helpful to know exactly what businesses are looking for in the area um, versus what we think businesses are looking for. That's true. So and I, get, I get that. I totally get that. Uh, I guess my, my real concern is, is we all know what they're looking for, but if they can't get it here, is that something that we want to promote and give back to statistics on. Is there any way that we could take this study and use it for internal research only? No. It's publicly funded. It needs to be a public document. You know, Ron, I echo what you say that that's a valid concern, but I also wonder, we've, we've all done our fair share of assuming why those don't want to work don't work. Uh, we've heard the reasons. I've not had really anyone walk up to me and say, I choose not to work because the stimulus I'm getting is more. We've heard that, but how would people answer? Now, pre-stimulus, this problem started showing up pre-stimulus. You and I both have hired people. I've hired people that I let go after a couple hours. I've hired people that I gave a chance and let them, let them hang on for a week. And, and I'm finding more, I'm just lazy. I don't want to learn. I don't know what it is. Um, so if the study could focus on stuff like that as well, I think it'd be good to know. Like is, it, is, it, is it the yeah. stimulus or is it work there ethic? Is none. I, I just don't want to work. <laughs> because I think as a community, we have to start looking at that. And, you know, we've had the, uh, the bridges to poverty or poverty to whatever, try to teach people checkbooking and accounting and, and balancing their finances. You know, right now we're making a lot of assumptions with nothing in writing. and I, you know, I can see the benefit of it. And, and possibly sense. some of that, Steve, is there's a lot of kids in high school that don't want to go to college, and they do want that career in tech ed. So do we need to start focusing things more on career in tech ed and keeping our kids here with their career in tech ed instead of saying, oh, go to the four-year university, go do something, you know, whatever. So, I, I mean, I see the value, too, but I also agree with what you're saying as far as the yeah, I think it's just a catch-22 no matter but that's not just, <laughs> But that's not just here. That's, that's everywhere. Right, yeah, everywhere you drive in the United States, it's help wanted after help wanted after help wanted after help wanted. Yeah. Well, I mean, at the end of the day, at, at the end of the day, the issue is what it, the issue is. What it is. I mean, we all know that there's jobs available. We all know that there are people that are not working. We just don't know the answer to the question why. And, you know, we can do it. We, we can do the study, not do the study, but at the end of the day, I mean, you're right. This asks the question why. We can see it black and white. This is, you know, maybe it's the kinds of jobs that are available. Maybe it's the types of benefits being offered. The pay, the well, benefits. And there's a lot of money being offered by Everty to do the study. So. Where, where are you going to get your uh, samples from? Are you going to go to the, to the schools? Are you going to go to the work? The yeah. manufacturers, the or are you going to just walk down the street? And that would depend on the firm selected. Is it like a mail thing or something? Or? I know at the Fort Hayes State uh, Docking Institute, it's um, uh, typically a single blind uh, study that would be interviews on the ground. It would be a population check. Um, at the time I was in uh, college there, Dr. Soon was uh, one of the major, but one of the heads of that. And, they do a really good job as far as making sure that their research is thorough. So, well, I mean, I, I just don't want them coming in and you know studying or, or taking information from the working force. You know, there's a whole broad spectrum of people out there. You know, if they just go to the manufacturers or the schools, they're not going to get a true feeling of what's going on unless they hit the streets. I guess my other thoughts on it are if it's going to be like other studies where we paid for them and not use the data 
if we're going to pay for it, let's make sure that that is going to be used. Absolutely. Yes. This won't be a, a, a book game in a bookshelf. Yeah. We need to use the data for sure. So how do you get the data? They gather through a variety of sources, first-person interviews, um, telephone calls. They are here physically. They all differ a little bit in their labor studies and their approaches. Um, I've never done one, so I've never been in the trenches and actually experienced it, but um, they have a variety of tools for gathering data. Council want to, does somebody on the council want to make it? Are we wanting to continue then? Carl, do you have a... I'm ready to make a motion. I make a... Motion that we support the labor study request from, from Thrive in the amount of one thousand five hundred dollars. Second. There is a motion and a second to support the labor study for fifteen hundred dollars. All those in favor, please show a voting sign. Opposed. Motion passes. Thank you, Council. EMS discussion. Um, hold on, real quick. Uh, Council, I know there's been some frustration. Um, I know that you all would like to vent for a second. We're going to do this in an organized, orderly fashion. Um, I'm going to give you once around, and I'm going to go around the table. You get to say your one piece of frustration so far at this, and then we're going to move on to the uh, business at hand. Um, I know a lot of you have expressed frustration online, in the paper, uh, to me, to, to others. Um, and so I, I'd like to give you your opportunity here, but I also want to make it brief and move on to the business in front of us. Um, anyone wishing to go first? I'll start. Go for it. I just, I, I, I personally am disappointed. We are a small community. We support local business, and the county has now stepped away from supporting the local business, the local citizens, our employees that live here and gone with a company that is nationwide, that is located, their headquarters are located in Colorado, and we preach, preach, preach by local. And to me, it, it's it's just very disheartening. So. Steve. Yeah, I'd like to remind my fellow council members, this isn't a time to personally bash any of the county, the county members. Uh, business is business and they have the right to do what they did and I'd like us to uh, stay professional and on that note uh, you know we we've got a service to continue to provide for uh, gentlemen's agreement we're gonna uphold that gentleman's agreement uh, and I know all these individuals behind us and the ones not here each and every one of them I believe are, are those type of professionals that will hang in there with us as we sort out the details and figure out what we're doing next and uh, let's just continue to move forward as professionals, uh, just like the uh, service has been for several years. Kim. I want to say thank you to all the people behind me. That they've done a fabulous job. They're compassionate. They're knowledgeable. They're caring. I'm trying to keep it as professional as possible. <laughs> um, I feel like there was no negotiation, that that word was a joke. In the very beginning that it was decided way before negotiating started and so um, I hope we can decide the right thing tonight to support these people behind us. Thank you. Ron. I put mine into a letter so I, I wanted to make sure I didn't forget anything. Um, it's hard to put into words the disappointment and anger that I have with the county commission at this point to say that this was a setup prior to the RFPs ever being talked about as an understatement. When the county officials stated that this would be an open and fair way of bidding services, I believe that they lied to every person in this room and in this county. When RFPs were developed and released, it was very clear this was set up in a way that the county could manipulate the contract in a way to do what the city of is provided. To our employees and citizens, I'm here to tell you that we, the city, tried to make a deal in good faith deal that would benefit the city, county, and most importantly, Allen County residents. The game the county commission played is downright childish and disheartening. This was so set up that the county doesn't even have a contract in place right now for EMS services come January 1. The company that they selected to use could now back out of talks or raise their prices since they're not obligated to anything at this point and leave this county without EMS services. What poor management of an emergency service. I'm sorry to our employees that have wondered if they still have a job, will still have a job, and are still waiting to see. The county commission decided 
that it was better to have a national company run our local services and send millions of dollars out of our county in salaries and tax dollars that won't be spent. I urge everyone to remember this instance when it comes time to vote for county commission and ask yourself if they have your best interests in mind and if the county commission thinks of shopping local. Well, I was uh, asked last week by the register to, to make some comments, and since then I've given more thought to this issue, and I'm persuaded to change my opinion. I think when we went through this process in 2013, it was very, I mean, it had some beneficial effects, but it was a very painful process to go through for a whole year of trying to negotiate the contract. and contract uh, started, I believe, in January of 2014. And since then, we have, uh, my estimation, that we have subsidized the cost of the EMS operation to the tune of two to 300,000 each year. Uh, that means that uh, since 2014, I think we've contributed about 2.4 million to the operation of the EMS in the county. I, I wish the county had decided to go with the city and continued and given us a little uh, more revenue to, to operate the, our emergency medical service. I think that uh, AMR is a company that uh, has done a good job, but the challenge is when you contract with an outside agency, then part of that uh, funding that goes to them is for somebody outside of the city. And so we're s essentially subsidizing an outside company where I, pref I would prefer that though the funding would stay inside the city and we would use our own uh, existing county resources. So I, even though I, I don't like the arrangement of having dual services, if we elect to support or continue a service for the area within the city limits and the county decides that they want to go ahead with supporting, uh, using AMR for Humboldt Moran, that kind of creates the situation we were in before. And I would hate to see that, but I, I would, uh, I think I would change my tune a little bit and support a service, if that's the consensus of the city, to at least try to continue the service within the city limits. Well, first off, I want to let all those people sitting over there in blue know, I said right here in open council, I said that we was going to fight for your guys' jobs and ladies' jobs. I feel like, personally, I've let you guys down with the way things have happened. But I want to let you know this council has fought and we will continue to fight for you guys. Don't give up on us yet. I feel betrayed, disheartened. I still feel the knife in my back <laughs> over what went on. Uh, I honestly feel, I've made this statement before to some other people, no matter what our dollar figure would have been, the county already had their mind made up, even though I didn't want to believe it. I think they did. And moving forward, we need to act as professionals and do everything we can to save you guys and ladies' jobs sitting over there in blue and hopefully get a service that I can trust because I feel AMR comes in. If they don't hire you guys that know everybody, that are sympathetic and empathetic with the people you know, they bring in people and I've talked, I got doctors, friends, that have said that AMR does not run the type of professionalism when it comes to care as we run and this one person has worked with a lot of UEMS people and he's afraid to see that come back within Iowa 
I want to keep the same service that we have, if any way possible. Yeah. So, I want to thank the firefighters, the staff. You guys uh, did a great job um, trying to represent the city's position. You guys have served faithfully over the years, and that's an appreciation that this community, uh, city, and county uh, can never really repay. So thank you guys for your time and your investment in the community. As far as where we go from here, I don't have a lot of animosity towards the county. Um, I think the county looked at it as a business uh, venture, and the one thing that I think they may have missed is the element of um, community versus dollars. Um, but honestly, I'm uh, interested to see where we go, and I'm uh, hopeful that we can actually salvage something positive from the negative. I'm going to reserve myself for last, Mark. Well, thank everybody here for what you've done, but I've seen this happen in manufacturing where they've outsourced, and this is basically what they've done. They've outsourced it, your jobs, and it, it hurts every time. You cannot get the care like you have from you guys know your people here, you know your neighbors, and it was, you know, it was just disheartening to see they, they did something like this. And they went, you know, kind of behind our backs on it. We kept giving them, a, you know, what we could do for, what we could help them with, and, and they just kept, it seemed like they just kept leaning more towards, no, we're going to give this to, out, we're going to outsource this. And I just don't want to see what it's going to be like in the future. I think a lot of what's been said uh, from the council reflects a lot of my opinions on this. Um, I, I won't go into further detail then. Uh, I will note some of mine as a political scientist, as a government instructor, as somebody that has worked for the federal government, that has worked for state government, that has worked for local government. Um, I think part of my frustration is that two people can make this decision for the entire county. It, it only takes a motion and a second. And I don't believe in the structure of governance, a motion and a second should pass anything. Imagine if this council a motion and a second passed any everything. The whims would be up to really just two people. And I think that's the frustration I'm feeling. Um, council, let us move into the matter at hand. Uh, Matt, Corey, um, I'll turn this over to you for a second, Matt. Or you just want to hear our thoughts? Uh, yeah, actually, I was just going to say uh, we'll, we'll take whatever direction you you give us tonight. Um, I guess, Mayor, I was going to let you okay. run, run the discussion. Um, that seems that seems fair, as we're probably issuing directives. I would like to uh, hold, hold on. Let's, let's get the council to start real quick. I wanted to make one more comment. Okay. Um, I stated that uh, I thought that we had subsidized the operation by two to three hundred thousand each year, and I and I based that on the, the quote from AMR was one point four million, um, and then they raised it a little bit if they were required to provide two transfers at a time, and the subsidy has been recently one point one million. So there's. Three hundred thousand something. So I think it, it's, it's still a million. One million seven thousand. So that's the difference yeah. that I'm. That's where I'm getting this figure of, of approximately what it costs or what the estimated mm -hmm. cost would be right now, versus the subsidy, and yeah. So I think uh, we have made an effort to try to provide a quality service for the community at the most reasonable cost. I think we've done that. Um, I'll turn over and I think we, we've got the opinion of, of our EMS staff. We're going to discuss this for a minute and then um, I'll let you all speak if you'd like to. Um, I do believe we've read your letter um, and we thank you for your letter. Do we have any numbers yet as far as what it would cost and staffing levels? I mean, I think yeah. that's an important thing that us as the council we should have had tonight so we can see that. That was sent out by email. The numbers? Yes. Um, 
I don't remember seeing that. I, I think there's an interesting new development as well. Um, I, I don't normally ask for legal advice in public. I don't know if we want to do an exec with Mr. Heim. Um, we can always suspend the rules and add one. Um, would you prefer to give an opinion in public or in private on, on what we've asked you? Either way, um, I don't know if there's any, if there's any concrete answer tonight to know exactly which direction you intend to go. Um, will you well, come you to the mic for me? American yeah. 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 If, if you want an interpretation of, of a statute, let's go into executive. Okay. Um, can I get the council to suspend the rules for a minute? Mm -hmm. And just an FYI, my computer's on the right, so I, I don't have the figures. I'm not sure accessing the uh, rules and answering an agenda item for a executive session of council, Second. including the mayor, the city administrator, deputy city administrator, and attorney client attorneys. And under attorney client privilege. A uh, motion has been made and seconded because this is a suspension of the rules. I do need a two thirds majority. If you want to do that for five minutes or 10 minutes? 10, ten minutes. Ten minutes. Uh, the motion is to suspend the rules, add an agenda item, uh, then we will vote on the actual thing. So um, all those in favor to suspend the rules and add an agenda item of an executive session, please show voting sign. Motion passes. Now you can make the motion of the 10 minutes executive. Uh, motion to uh, recess for executive session for uh, articles pertaining to attorney-client privilege uh, to include the city administrator, uh, deputy city administrator, and city uh, council. Second. And our attorney. And what's up? And our attorney. And our attorney. <coughs> Motion's made and seconded. All those in favor, please show a voting sign. Okay. Ron, that was you. Yes. So we'll be back out at 7.30. Or I'm sorry. 7.44. 6.44. 6.44. 7.44. Sorry. Although there is a few good show on the
give the bag to him? Um, I will call this meeting back to order. We can get everyone back to order. Uh, thank you, Brett. Thank you for thank your, you, and thank you for your opinion, your service. I think you're good. Council, do you need our attorney here for any other reason? You think? Thanks, Brett. Thank you. <laughs> All right, let's call this meeting back to order. Um, uh, let me let me start here as we're back. I think we have some clarity internally. Uh, we will not reveal uh, under attorney-client privileges. We're not going to talk about any of that. Um, but I will ask then for uh, anyone from the fire department, um, if they want to speak to the council, want to speak on the record. Um, before we have our next bit of conversation. Um, I'm Kenneth Powell. I'm Deputy Chief at the Fire Department. You've all met me previous weeks. Um, mainly I'm here because we want some clarity, of course, which I don't know if you can give that to us or not. But it's going to be hard for us to keep some of our less seasoned staff on board throughout this if we don't have some type of direction is what we're asking for. The fire department is, in some form, provided EMS since 1959. And we want to be sure that we still provide that for our citizens. So, um, as far as upfront expenditures, we have everything in place. The people are there, the equipment's there, it's ours, it's sitting. So, um, I'm here to answer any questions that I can. If not, I'll get some on the can. Thank you. I actually like to ask a question. Mm -hmm. When you say the city owns the equipment and the city has the stuff in place, I mean, depending on where we go as far as funding and things like that, we're ready for a smooth transition? Yes. Yeah. Yep. We can go. Actually, Kevin, why don't you just tell them what we have? I said, kind of what you would, what you told me, and Corey, when, when we went over. Yes. So, yeah, just go over. Okay, we have in place, we have our uh, drug license. So we get all the drugs that we use on the ambulance. We already have the license in our name. Um, we have two ambulances. We have all the equipment on there. The big, big ticket items, like the uh, cardiac monitors, we have them. We have, I think, three of them or four. Four of them. Um, we also have the cots already, so, and all the loose supplies is already the city's. Everything in the cabinets in there, we already paid for it, it's ours. And the buses belong to us? We've got two of the buses belong to us. They're the older buses, but they're ours. And they will work just fine for in the city. So everything needed to run the ALS, the upper service is still in place, it would be ours? To run a complete service, ALS, BLS, Everything we we have it. Everything we're used to. And council, when we merged at the beginning, I or when we expanded at the beginning, I and we got into some heated discussions. Whenever we were at seven hundred and fifty thousand, and I remember you said we need to cut. Um, I said that you know the county has some equipment, but we actually have something far, far, far more valuable, and that's our personnel. Point blank, um, you can buy a new ambulance. You can get a used one. You can go out and find ambulances. You can't go out and find this many, this many employees to run a service that are trained, that are qualified. Um, and I've said that since day one. We got the better end of that service deal in that we have what we need at any moment in time. Um, I, I, would, I would say from my perspective, uh, I would encourage the council and I would encourage the council to encourage staff to not make a decision, um, but to really run some hard numbers and to bring those forward. That's um, what I want. I'd like to see uh, between you guys at the station and Matt and Corey come up with some hard numbers and if we got to call an executive session to go over those. You mean a special, a special session? special session to go over those as long as it's before the 2nd of September. 
Let's do that. If not, let's have them at the next council meeting. I'd encourage the existing staff to just be patient with us. Yes, I that, and I know that's tough to do. Please give us a little more time. But we'll work through it as fast as we, we can. We just want to, yeah. Yes. Yes. And we thank you very much for that. And once again, I'm going to sit here in open meeting and say that we're fighting like hell for all of you guys out there. We want to keep you, and we're going to do what we can to keep you. I'll this go is not on, what I'll any go on, of us wanted. I will so. go on the record and say I would support an independent. Um, if, if this goes the way that it goes, and uh, you know, part of the frustration here is we actually don't know what service AMR has. We don't know if it's two transfers and one ambulance. We don't know if it's two transfers and two ambulances. We know nothing of the service um, that they've actually did. Um, this has been part of my transparency. Um, like, we don't know anything, right? I'd say what, what we know is what was asked of us. Right. That's what we know. Um, but we actually don't know anything here. Um, you know, if this does, I will go on the record and say I would support uh, a IFD EMS department for the city limits. So, other questions? Just because I'm totally inexperienced when it comes to some of this stuff. Aren't there other joint ventures, rescue, hazmat, and things like that that we have agreements with the county? Yes. If those are. agreements are with the county and not with AMR, is AMR going to provide those services? Or? No. We don't know. That's a question. <laughs> I, I actually, actually uh, Merrick, can I jump in yeah. on that? Um, part of the numbers you want, Corey and I will put that together uh, okay. with, with uh, rescue. Um, and obviously for about three days, I was gone Thursday, Friday, and most of today. Tuesday and Wednesday, I'm actually called for Wrigley Field on, on Friday to talk about it. Um, the, uh, we, we've been talking in, internally about what numbers you all should see. So I, I, I get the feeling that what Corey and I have been talking about is, is what you all want to see. If there's something specific, please let us know. Um, but, but we've, and God, I hate putting it this way, but we've been throwing darts at the wall. So we, we, we think we've got, we've got a ballpark. Of, of, of what it's going to cost and what, well, we're, we're, we're losing a million bucks. That, that's already set in stone now. Um, but we, we, we think we have an idea. Corey and I are going to have to put it together. Um, I, I think we're going to need all the three weeks between the next two meetings. Um, the next meeting is September 13th. Uh, we can have it done by then. Corey and I might have to lock ourselves in my office to get it done. Roxanne will be involved. Uh, the fire department is going to be involved. Uh, but I, we, we, we can get the numbers you want. I think I know what it is you're wanting, and it is what okay. we've been discussing internally. Uh, I got one question. As far as staffing, I think I'm talking, and I can't remember what I've been told, but with what we have on board now, not counting the Humboldt and Grant, can we, with the staffing we have on level now, can we run? both type services within the city yeah yes we can and not be short staffed yeah it and it all depends on if people stay to see that we make it to that point and things like that because like i say all these guys out here are in demand in other places there's other counties that have called them and asked them if they come to work with so there's they're staffing there if we can keep them there. Okay, that's what's my concern. I would urge council to move quickly on this and give them decisions. Uh, having gone through this before, when the city expanded services, uh, it was very worrisome. And if you want to talk about people looking for jobs, it's very hard for these people out here to continue to come to these meetings and not find out what's going on. Uh, you know, for us, we know what's going on, but for them. It's scary for them. <laughs> That's why I say if we have to call a special so, session, let's do it. You know, and when you sit and think about it, and you go, well, how long am I really going to wait for this when my capers and everything will just transfer over? It's, it's very hard. We're getting down to that time, especially if somebody has to move. Oh, that's what I agree. I, we need to, we need to plow through this as fast as we can, 
making smart decisions along the way, but as fast as we possibly can so that everybody has peace of mind and they, they you know, I mean, nobody wants that insecurity. And it's like walking on a tightrope and nobody wants to do that. So it's just like Mark said, you know, when you hear your company might be outsourcing and you don't know what's happening, nobody, nobody should have to endure that at their place of employment and especially not here. I, uh, hold on, guys. Hold on. We are we are kind of going down a rabbit hole here, and I think we need to start directing staff at what we want. Let, 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 me, let me ask this question. Let me ask this question, and maybe that will help staff. Hypothetically, you three, how long do you think it would take to have a rough ballpark figure? Friday, Monday, or what? At the end of the week, probably. Well, then if we have to have a special meeting, let's have it. If we have to have a special meeting next Monday, let's do it. The, the main thing I want everyone to hear tonight behind us is it sounds like, if you took a straw poll, that we are all in support of moving forward. So so that's that's yeah. better than not knowing anything. Um, you know, we're, we all favor continuing a, a dual service. Could we have um, something like possibly, and I do think possibly we need to by Monday? As expeditiously as possible. Hold on, Gene. Um, I agree with you, Steve. Um, why don't we? Well, I, I would hate. I, I would like staff to work quickly, but I also don't want them to work diligently. Well, I want them to work diligently on top of this. Um, let's see where they are on Friday. Guys, a special meeting can be called relatively quickly. Um, let's see where the numbers are. Let's see how comfortable they feel. Let's see what staff thinks they need on time. Um, he said, you know, to get these really accurate numbers, we're going to need all of three weeks. Uh, we may get the rough numbers and not need the special um, until that. So let's let's bear with it. Um, let's give staff the time they need to work. Um, this is a tricky question. I mean, I don't mean to be putting pressure on the staff, but you know, we don't need to be dragging our feet. With uh, with all that being said, I think that with in the grand scheme of things, I think we probably need to discuss fire chief issue as well. It's, we have a lot of people here and they have nobody to look to right now. And if we, we do an intro or something of that sort, I think that we should probably look at doing that. And I don't know how you all feel about it, but I would I would even move to suspend the rules again and go to executive session to talk about it. I think that's something we need to address too. That's probably a good point. I mean, things are unstable. Uh, Maron's made a motion to suspend the rules and add a executive session under non-elected personnel. Is that correct? For did I? Is there a gene? Did you second that? Yeah, for, uh, I make a motion that we. Ron's already made a motion. There is a second to suspend the rules and have an executive session under non elected personnel. All those in favor? 15 minutes. No, hold on. We've got to approve one motion before we can approve a second. Uh, so all those in favor of an executive, of suspending the rules to add another executive session, show <coughs> hands, opposed. I think we ought to wait for the next uh, scheduled meeting and get prepared for it, and I'll just talk about it on off the cuff. Are we discussing one individual? No, do you think that's not an executive session? Concerned that we're stretching it a bit. Okay. Brett's not. Brett's not. I mean, who? Uh, not elected. I'm going to say. Candidate, though. I get where you're coming from. Give me a minute here. Yeah. Yeah, we generally don't suspend the rules. Um, Council made the motion and seconded it. I see that the well, I mean, nothing says that nothing says that we can't do that special on Monday or later this week then to discuss that one item. Or let's see where these numbers come. Yes, you and we can discuss that there as well. Oh, 
just proceed on their own to advertise? Yeah, but the question I think is, is about interim and how we're going to staff that. Um, I'd rather see a motion on I mean, uh, the agenda. Okay. I think, I think you're right on that, Carl, that we're, we're treading on some thin ground here. Um, I'm trying to do my parley pro in my head here. Technically, that's on there. Um, the council does not have to vote in favor for an executive session here, um, but we've added it to the agenda. What? The motion can very much fail here, and that gets us out of it. So I make a motion for executive session for three hours. <laughs> hold on, hold on, watch this. That, that's a really solid way to do this, Ron. That is a very solid way to get us out of this uh, predicament we got ourselves into. Um, is there a second? Is there a second? Is there a second? Second. Oh, come on. There is a second. All those in favor, please show a voting sign. Second has to vote yes. All those opposed? Motion passes, our motion fails. Okay, here we go, we got out of this. Uh, all right, I do apologize for that to the viewers at home. Um, this is why we tend to not suspend the rules and add agenda items. Uh, literally, this is why we tend not to suspend the rules and add agenda items. It adds a lot of confusion. Donna, you're talking very loudly. <laughs> I've got two really good questions I'm asking him because I can see a problem with this whole thing. Okay. Um, we just fixed it. No, so, okay, we're, we're going to move forward here then. Uh, we may have this special on Monday. Um, we will talk about one or two items then. Um, if I will also talk, I think I know, Ron, where your point is, I'll get with, or if you want to get with Matt. That's fine, I understand. I understand that. I, uh, if you want to get with Matt, I'll get with Matt and Corey as well tomorrow and talk to you a bit. I, I think I know, I think I know and understand why you're asking what you're asking, um, and, and I do see some validity in it. Um, but that being said, we are now in line for item A, an executive session actually on the agenda. Uh, Thrive. Actually, is there any other further comments or questions to the EMS? Anyone want to say any last parting words or? Feel free to speak now or for a vote please. Um, I, I would also encourage, uh, remember, until the county signs a contract, it is not signed a contract. Um, if the public, it seems like the public is upset with this decision, call your county commissioner. Hmm. David Lee and Jerry Daniels. Call, call all three. <laughs> okay, if there's nothing else, um, we do apologize not to give you a whole lot of decision today, but, but I think we're moving towards a direction, and I imagine at the next meeting, uh, whether that's a special meeting or or the regular meeting, that we're going to make a decision there. Is that about right, Council? Give us a week. Yes. Yes. Give us a week. <coughs> Stay with us. we got to talk to lawyers. Okay. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I know a executive session, trade secrets. How long do you need? Jonathan, uh, Liss, Lissa. 15 minutes, Tops. 15 I move the city council recess into executive session for 15 minutes prior to trade secrets KSA 75 4319 B4. The purpose of the executive session is to discuss confidential data related to financial and operating affairs, and shall include the mayor, council, city administrator, system administrator. Brown Island County Economic Director Jonathan Gurry. The regular meeting shall resume at 720. 720. Second. Third. Motion made and seconded. All those in favor. And third. This motion passes. Thank you guys for your Thank you all. Thank you guys. Very people. I know. I know.